Hey guys, what's up? It's Alec Torelli and welcome back to the hand of the day. Today's hand comes from the 2016 Poker Players Championship and we're heads up with two of the best, Justin Bonomo and Brian Rast. Now they're both really deep stacked, they're about 65 big blinds effective. The blinds are 80, 160K with a 40K ante. This hand kicks off with Justin Bonomo on the button, Queen Jack offsuit, opening to 400k or two and a half big blinds. And Brian Rast in the big blind just opts to call with ace-10 off. Now this is totally standard by both players. When you're pretty deep stacked like this, uh, like 60, 70 big blinds, I think calling, I mean, opening with queen jack offs, totally standard, two and a half big blinds, normal raise size. I think is gonna be doing this here with all of his hands, something like 90% of the deck, which is totally fine. Now Rast has a decision. He could three bed here with ace-10, and take the lead. He's a favorite to have the best hand. He could go for a three bet, but it's a tough spot if he decide if he if Bonomo four bets. Rast sorta has a hand that's too good to fold, but at the same time, is he's in a really compromising spot being out of position against a good player it, with a hand that's vulnerable like Ace Ten. The other side of the the situation is that Bonomo's not that likely to call a three bet with a hand that Rast dominates. Maybe Bonomo calls with some worse tens like Ten Jack Queen. 10 or something like that, but a lot of the worse aces fold and the better aces call. So I like calling here if I'm Rast because I keep in the pot hands that I dominate and that I want to play a hand against, which allows me to win a big pot later. It also makes me tougher to play against because this is one of the better hands I could have when I just flat call, and it makes me tougher to play against heads up because my hand is underplayed. And so my opponent doesn't put me on a hand as strong as I have, which might give credence to him bluffing later on in the hand. So I like calling here if I'm Rast. That's the long-winded explanation of preflop. And we go heads up to the flop. The flop comes ace 10 rag rainbow, right? Ace 10 5 rainbow. This is an excellent flop for Rast. Obviously, he flops top two, but it's also a good flop for Bonomo, and here's why. Rast, like we said, is pretty unlikely to have an ace because he just flat called pre flop, and if he does have an ace, he's going to have a weak ace. So Rast's hands on this flop are very vulnerable, and it's unlikely that he has a really, really strong hand. Most of the time, Bonomo would expect Rast to three bet preflop with ace 10, certainly with two 10s, and probably with pocket fives, and of course with pocket aces. So Rast doesn't have that many hands that smash this flop, so this is a really good spot for Bonomo to take control and come out blazing. Rast checks, which is totally standard. He's gonna be checking here 100% of the time. Pretty standard to check to the preflop razor, especially on these dry ace high boards. And now the pot is 880,000, and Bonomo has a clear bet. He decides to bet on the small side, which he bets something like 350,000, a little less than half pot. Now that's a fine play because it allows you to bluff cheaper. So when you make these really small bets, especially in tournaments when the stack to pot ratio is smaller or your stack size is smaller, it allows you to justify bluffing uh, with, with more hands and get a better price on your bluffs and sort of be a little more balanced. I'm also okay with Bonomo going for a bigger size here just because it's so much more likely that Bonomo has a strong hand than it is that Rast has a strong hand. And anytime you're in a spot where your hand is a lot stronger than your opponent's hand, it's a good spot to bet bigger. So I'm okay with Bonomo betting here. I'm okay with him betting 350. I'm also okay with him betting something like 600 or even 1.2 million just because it puts Rast in a really, really tough spot most of the time. That being said, 350 is fine. Rast calls, which is fine. I like that he called here because again, he's trapping in this spot and most of the time he's gonna be calling this flop, he's gonna have weak hands, something like a five, king high, like king queen, king jack, or a 10, maybe a weak ace, but he doesn't have that many hands that can compete on this board. So I like when he incorporates strong hands with just a call because it makes him harder to play again. So I like that he called here. It's going to make Bonomo think that he's probably weak and Bonomo is likely to keep bluffing later on in the hand. So anyway, he calls and we go heads up again to the turn. Turn comes an offsuit ace, which is an excellent card. For Rast obviously makes the stone nuts, but in a weird sort of perverse way, it's also a good card for Bonomo, right? Bonomo was repping an ace on the flop with a bet, 
And now at this point, he knows that it's much more likely that he has an ace than Rast. When the ace comes on the turn, it's important to keep in mind that it makes it less likely that your opponent has an ace, not more likely, because there's less aces in the deck that your opponent could have. At the same time, you know, Bonomo could still have all the aces that he see bet the flop with. And like we said, Rast is much more likely to have something like a 10, a 5, or King High. So I'm okay with Bonomo betting again here. The problem is with betting a second time is that your opponent is unlikely to fold a 10 to a second bet. Maybe he folds King High, maybe he folds a 5. He's definitely not going to fold 10, I don't think, and he's definitely not going to fold an ace. So it's a spot where it's not great to bluff, but if you never bluff in spots that aren't good to bluff, your opponent could just easily fold because he knows you're never bluffing. So it's kind of like this this like catch 22 sort of thing. It's it's a bad spot to bluff, but some of the times you have to bluff in order to get paid the times that you have good hands. So I'm okay with bluffing here some of the time. And if you're going to pick a spot to do it, this seems like a fine one, right? It seems like it's just unlikely Rast has an ace with this specific texture of a board. And if he does, he's going to call the turn. But if Rast is folding everything but an ace in this spot, your buff's probably going to work often enough. That being said, if he also does call with a 10, Bonomo still has a decent amount of outs, right? If, if Rast has something like 10-9, Bonomo could still win here on the river with a queen, a jack, or a king. So he does have some outs here, and this is a pretty good hand to bluff with uh, because he does have some of those outs. So I'm okay with him betting here. Now he decides to bet really, really big. He bets 2.2 million, which is like one and a half times the pot. Now, I understand his logic here. He's basically saying with any bet on the turn that he has an ace or better. And given that he's saying he has an ace when he bets the turn, he might as well bet really, really big. Because if he bets 1.2 million, the hands that Bonomo could have are exactly the same. Bonomo's never betting 1.2 million with a five or a week 10. He's gonna check those hands behind and play pot control. So when he does bet the turn, he either has bluff or an ace. And because of that, and because he has a stronger possible holdings than Rast has, it makes sense to bet big. This is sort of goes back to the logic I said on the flop that because he has a, a, a strength advantage with ter in terms of his hand, he could go for a bigger bet, even an over bet. He could have done this on the flop and maybe saved himself a big bet here on the turn w when the pot was smaller and just try to win the pot outright on the flop with a large bet. I'm okay with him doing it on the turn here, especially because people never expect their opponents to bluff in this spot, which sort of oddly makes it a good spot to bluff. So I'm okay with a $2.2 million bet. At this point, when Rast calls the turn, you have to expect that he's probably only gonna call this turn with an ace. Maybe some of the time he calls with like King 10 or something like that, but I think most of the time he knows that his opponent is either bluffing or has an ace, and his opponent's not bluffing often, or he shouldn't be, so Ras is probably only gonna call the turn with really, really strong hands. So I would wonder what Bonomo is gonna do on the river here if it blanks, because it's it's a tough spot for him to play. Like, is he really gonna bluff and try and get Ras to fold an ace? I'm not sure, and that's sort of the problem with betting really big on this turn here, is when your opponent calls, you don't really know what to do on the river because you don't know how he's going to react. Anyway, Bonomo bets, Rast of course calls, I love the call here if I'm Rast, clear call, raising would be a terrible play, uh, you want to call and let your opponent either catch up, continue bluffing, or value bet himself to death. Rast calls, and the river comes an offsuit king, which is absolute, like, <laughs> knife in the chest for Bonomo, who, you know, thinks he has the best hand at this point, it's extremely unlikely his opponent has a full house, and it's really likely his opponent has just ace rag, and this card gives him, you know, a hand that's better than all of his opponent's hands almost all of the time. So we're going to see a bet here from Bonomo, and we're going to expect the check raise here from Rast. Pretty standard in this spot. What's particularly brutal about the king is that it's really likely that Rast has an ace that is chopping with another ace that Bonomo has, if Bonomo has an ace. So let's, like, Rast's most likely hand is something like ace three, ace four, ace six, ace seven, ace eight, ace nine, etc. Ace five is obviously unlikely because there's just less possibilities of full houses than there are of three aces. Again, it's really unlike, it's pretty much impossible Rast has ace king. I would say that's impossible because he would three bet with that preflop. And ace queen and ace jack are also extremely unlikely because he would three bet with those preflop as well. And ace 10, of course, there's only one possibility. So, Super unlikely that Rast has a boat. Really likely that Rast has trips. Now, that's important because if we're Bonomo, we know that Rast probably has trips. So if I'm Bonomo and I have like ace eight, I might shove this river as a bluff, trying to get my opponent to fold a chop. And if he calls, I know I'm getting half the pot, but he might fold ace eight some of the time, and then I'm gonna win instead of chopping. So I, 
I expect Bonomo to go all in here with Queen Jack because he knows when he has Queen Jack, his opponent has an ace, right? He doesn't block any of the aces. And so it's like twice as likely that his opponent has an ace. And it's also fairly likely that his opponent's going to call. I mean, the, the flush draw missed. And if Bonomo's ever bluffing, he's going to bluff this river. Rast is probably not going to fold. So Bonomo bombs it here and he goes all in for like 7 million. I think he has 7 million, 8 million left uh, on this river. So it's like one and a half times, one and a quarter, one and, one and a third times the pot, which I'm totally okay with. I think Bonomo played this hand very, very well. And I think it's really important to keep in mind that just because he got absolutely coolered, and of course Rast snap calls and <laughs> wins the tournament, just because it got absolutely coolered doesn't mean that he played the hand wrong. Yes, Rast had a full house this one time, but if you look at all the hands that Rast could have here and what Rast has most of the time, this play is a clearly profitable play from Bonomo, and this is absolutely brutal that the board ran out this perfectly to have Rast have a full house, cooler Bonomo, and have Bonomo have a straight that he can go broke with. Totally brutal beat, but well done to Rast. Played it well. Congrats on the championship. Well deserved. That's poker. I hope you guys enjoyed this hand of the day. If you liked this video, please share it with someone you think would benefit. I would greatly appreciate that. It helps me grow the channel. Subscribe to my channel so you're always the first to know when more awesome videos like this come your way. And I'll see you guys next time on the hand of the day. Thanks for watching.